Hey guys, how's it going? Kripan here. Today I'm going to talk about Arcage. And Arcage is a pretty good game. Uh, it was certainly quite good when I played it in, uh, I don't know if it was the alpha or the beta stage, whatever, uh, some months ago. And um, it's an MMO. It's an MMO that uh, has a lot of grinding. I mean, it has a lot of uh, crafting systems with, you know, absurd scaling. So you need like tens of thousands of like this to craft you know, something like a boat or, you know, a house. There's a lot of very, very cool uh, designs in this type of game. And when I played it, when I started to understand what it was all about, when I started to understand the appeal people had for the game, it made sense. I realized uh, the game structure is very cool. I think, uh, you know, if I was a bit younger, it's it'd be much more appealing to me. It was a lot more like the... Uh, uh, the Dark Age sense of things where, you know, you take a long time, uh, a lot of effort to build up and get, like, items to get, uh, you know, what you want in the game. You kind of build up your character, you build up, like, kind of like an empire, you know. And uh, I really like that aspect. Um, it's a little bit more draining. I mean, I've kind of outgrown these type of games a little bit. Um, they don't appeal to me as much these days, but nonetheless, I had a great time playing in Alpha, and I let people know about this. But when the game came out, and uh, it was a couple weeks ago, uh, I didn't actually play it. And I, a lot of people were upset, uh, justifiably so. I said I will play it, and I ended up not playing it. And I wanted to go over that, I wanted to go over the reasons why, uh, not just myself, a lot of people in general were pretty upset about the launch and uh, why, in general, you know, this may happen. Why I might look like a hypocrite. I might say this game is really good, I'm gonna play it, and then when it comes out, well, I don't play it. And sometimes this is gonna be the case, and I don't really feel at fault, because most importantly, I need to feel good about what I'm doing every day. So I'll go into that first. Um, a lot of times, uh, I play a game in the alpha stage or just kind of like at an introductory stage and I like it and I say I will play it and even though uh, the game comes out uh, very often I'm not excited to play. This happened a few times with some PoE leagues uh, it's happened uh, with like the Diablo 3 ROS launch uh, actually specifically that I really didn't feel like playing it I just told people I would play Diablo 3 and I did and I really really hated it so the better response to this is just not to play it. Um, if I don't feel good about playing a game, if I don't want to play a game, um, probably from this point on in general, I'm just not going to. Um, in the case of Arcage, you guys have to understand that I played it, uh, let's just call it Alpha, I don't know exactly when I played it. It was pretty fun. I really liked the leveling. I think I played for like three or four days. Uh, I got to the level where you have to start leveling in PvP zones, and people made my life very difficult, let's say, to level. I had to PvP because they would PvP me while I tried to do some quests. And this, and among other reasons, I just got a bit bored. I couldn't really stand playing anymore. Of course, I didn't tell people the game was bad. Objectively, the game was pretty good. It had a lot of cool designs, a lot of cool mechanics. So yeah, the game is good. But right now I'm bored, I'm going to do some other stuff, and when the game comes out, yeah, for sure I'll play it. I mean, why not? It's a great game. Well, the game came out, I didn't feel like playing another MMO. Uh, I had just done, um, you know, some grinding in D3, I was really enjoying that, and you guys know, you guys probably understand, uh, when you're having a lot of fun in one game, you don't really look at others very much. So, that was the case, and again when you don't play a game on launch you feel a little bit left out you feel you're behind the motivation to actually play it uh, at a later time is well fairly low at least from my point of view so that's my side of things when it comes to committing myself to a game that hasn't come out yet on the other hand when it comes to this specific case of Arcage uh, I gave it a pretty fair chance um, you know, after it came out, I looked up some streams, I looked up the game, I researched what I would do, I tried to inform myself to get myself interested, and it wasn't happening, it wasn't clicking, I didn't like it too much. So, in the end, uh, I'm probably not going to play the game, but uh, if a lot of people continue to play, if a lot of people, um, you know, think the game is great uh, after some time, you know, I'm not going to miss out on another World of Warcraft, for instance. Um, like, I started World of Warcraft... Uh, like about middle of Burning Crusade 
And, you know, I missed out on vanilla. I know that was a big thing to miss out on. And, uh, you know, if I was aware, if I was paying attention to the game around that time, I should have known. I should have known that even though Dark Age was just about, you know, the greatest MMO overall ever that I've played, um, at that stage it was fairly repetitive and World of Warcraft was fresh, it was new, it was great. And, well, I don't want to miss out if that is the case with any game, really. So, I still might play it, but the chances are very slim. Now, what I want to talk about is there was a lot of bullshit uh, going on on the company side of this MMO. And I've seen this a lot recently. Uh, you guys have to keep in mind, the last few MMOs that I played, I played Neverwinter, which was a fantastic MMO, but it was completely destroyed by the game developers who just started banning people for no reason. Then their auction house had you know, the same bug as their previous game, which completely destroyed the economy, which is based on real life money. So they banned people who legitimately sold items to, um, to people who did have the duped gold. I mean, it was, it was insanity. It was chaotic mess. Um, and you know, it was completely ruined as, as, as a result. Uh, when it comes to like MOs other than that, I played like Guild Wars 2. There's videos if you guys want to know what happened in Guild Wars 2, okay? Guild Wars 2 was uh, probably the biggest joke of a game uh, that I can remember playing. Uh, even though the game itself was fairly good, um, what happened with the bands, what happened with the response by uh, the people in charge, and, you know, a few issues with the game itself, it was a complete mess. So, my expectations are pretty low, and when I see bullshit coming up like I did in Arcade, which I'll go over just in a second, I feel that it speaks on the company. Um, if they make a series of really ridiculously bad decisions, um, I feel like they're going to make more of them. And even though the game may have been good at one point, instead of climbing up and becoming better, it'll go downwards and it'll become shit. Uh, and this is especially true for MMOs, probably because of the requirements for the monies. Uh, you gotta have servers, you gotta have all this and that, so yeah, it's a little bit of a mess. So there's a few things that were introduced with Arcage. Arcage had something called a Founders Pack, and this is the only way that you could play Alpha or Beta or whatever else um, was involved with the game. And um, this Founders Pack cost $150. The game is essentially a free MMO, but because uh, a lot of the game has to do with crafting, and a lot of crafting has to do with um, essentially farming like a piece of land that you get, like a lot, to own a lot you have to pay a monthly fee. So it's not exactly completely free because uh, you're missing on a big aspect of the game. So people kind of knew that, they knew what they were on board for. Um, the crafting system was very good. Uh, there wasn't too much pay to win even though there was things that you could do to accelerate. Uh, I don't exactly know the extent of uh, labor potions in the alpha, but I know they were, you know, less significant than they are now. The way the game works, because it is crafting oriented, there is a resource um, that is consumed when you do tasks that involve crafting. And this resource is called labor. So if you craft a lot of shit, you run out of labor, you can't craft stuff until some time has passed to where your labor points replenish. And there exists something that you can buy for money, which are called labor potions, which instantly replenish uh, this resource. And I don't know the scale, I don't know precisely to what effect that ha this has in the game, but I know that just about everyone was really, really pissed off when they announced less than a week before the game was going to come out that these labor potions were going to uh, restore more labor, they're going to have no cooldown, and I know they added a cooldown after the incredibly awful feedback, and labor will be consumed at a higher rate when crafting things. In addition to that, uh, they made the uh, the crystals, I think they're called Archeum crystals, something like that, which are used to craft like the best gear in the game. They made their drop rate a lot lower, and it came to the point where the easiest way to really get them was to just buy chests that had random stuff, and among the random stuff, they would have a very uh, decent, not probably not very high, but a decent chance to get these type of crystals. So it became a game where it's dominated by crafting, but, um, after like a very long time of selling founder packs right before the game is going to come out, they made it you know, completely pay to win 
to where people who invest money in the game can like instantly get as much stuff as they want and can craft as much stuff as they want. Uh, and the whole game is based around this. It's based around the crafting. It's based around stuff. So the central point of the game is essentially something you pay for, which again, uh, was similar case in Neverwinter, and I enjoyed Neverwinter. But what's complete bullshit, why I think this is very relevant, is that these changes happened right before the game was supposed to launch. And they also had like the founders get like a four day head start, which is complete total bullshit as well. Um, so it's kind of one of the situations where they sell you on something and they switch it up, the bait and switch technique. Right on launch, they just fuck you over. And I know they reverted most, maybe actually all the changes, but the fact that they were even considering doing these type of actions speaks on the company, in my mind, or the people in charge, uh, so badly that my expectation for them to improve the game from that point on is pretty much done. And largely, uh, this impacted my decision to play the game. And this type of thinking, uh, I think, is quite fair. Um, I think this type of uh, analysis has worked fairly well uh, for games, games like Guild Wars 2, for games like, well, Diablo 3 for the most part. As it turns out, Diablo 3 was an appealing game to me because it was so hard, but there was so many things wrong with it. And it wasn't just that. It was the direction that the game was moving. Diablo 3, when the patches started rolling out at the start, I'm talking about two years ago, every patch made the game significantly worse. So, like, why would you continue a game that you're, like, fairly happy with, but every time a patch comes out, you hate it more? So, you know, these are the type of things that go through my mind, and certainly these are things that should go through your mind uh, when deciding whether you want to commit yourself to a game uh, that will probably, um, you know, have you compete against people who put in money in the game, that have people who you know, are going to play this game every day for like years and it's based around crafting and it's based around you know, kind of like snowballing how much stuff you have and you can speed up the snowball with money? Well, I decided I didn't really want to play that type of game. And again, I might change my decision if people find this game great in soon enough time, but I doubt this is going to be the case. I'm sorry if you guys expected me to play Arcage. I'm sorry if the situation happens in the future. But on top of everything, at the end of the day, I have to feel good about what I'm doing. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys know this, but it may not be clear enough. Um, you cannot play a game you hate like 12 hours a day. You can't do that because um, you'll just hate yourself. And you know, I've been in a situation a few times, like I said, when I played games I said I would play even though I didn't really want to at specific instances. Uh, when it comes to the long term, when it comes to picking up a game like Arcade, which people who are going to play that game hardcore are going to play for a very long time, it's not a commitment that uh, I wanted to start. So, I apologize. But, if you guys, again, are enjoying Arcade for your own reasons, don't mind my feedback at all. Enjoy it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.